name is Sandra Hoskinson. I work in the business school and I also work as a private consultant. I'm what Bridget described earlier on as part of the e-learning scary team. Um, I am just going to give you a quick run, three minute round, what I actually do in my job and this is my sort of personal take on how I get academics to use video for teaching. So I'm sure you've seen quite a lot of these answers, but these are some of the typical answers I get when um, trying to persuade academics to teach um, using video. So one of the favourite ones of mine is that the VLE won't actually take it, which is obviously not true, but that's one of the ones that comes up a lot. The other one that comes up a lot is that I'm not David Attenborough. Well, in actual fact, I'm not at David Attenborough either, and I'm standing here actually talking to you and my colleague is filming me at the moment. So I'm sure you come up with a, um, quite a few of these in actual fact. So what do I do? Well, you've started that initial conversation and somebody's actually come to talk to you about what, what it would be like to use video and you've got your in, you're in there. So one of the first things I look at is what other sticks are driving this. So motivation is important. Um, in terms of motivation, some of the, the things that I get asked a lot um, is how can this go into my PDR? Um, management centrally will be pushing to get something in like research um, and that might not seem like it fits with video, but I'll talk a bit in a bit how that does. Also, I'm teaching larger groups, it might not work with video and also I've got no time. I'm sure you can cross that one a lot. Everybody assumes it's going to be a complicated, long process, which, to be honest, it isn't. So, you've got that initial conversation going. I'd suggest to you that you go in always with some carrots. So, you're, you're in there. So, everybody likes an incentive. So, it's always a good idea to take something with you to get people going. So, in terms of equipment, like I've just given Keith my phone, I would take something in and get people actually filming. Let's get past that point where they're scared of it. Um, give them a camera, get them going. So in terms of staff time, one of the initiatives that we've used in the uh, business school is something called the e-learning champions, which we gave an allocated time for people actually to spend time working with me and with colleagues, and then also their teaching scope and why they're actually trying to do it. So that's always a good thing if you can get management to buy in and give that time um, and make it available. So, and also, you might want to think about uh, uh, providing some bespoke training if you've got enough people that are interested. So, what sort of inspiration do I go in? So, I'm going in as the champion for this. What sort of things would I actually do? And this, this is sort of my personal take on that. So, I basically demystify. Like I say, I would give them a camera, get them going, um, make sure they have a go, maybe take it home, film the kids, whatever you want to do just to get them past that point. And remember, this is a sales pitch at the end of the day. So if you don't like the advantages of it, there's no point in you going there and actually trying to do that, is there? If you don't think video is wonderful, then don't bother, to be honest with you. I've seen colleagues try to do this before, but if, if they're not using it themselves, then you, you know, you've got no credibility. Um, try and underpin it with research. There's quite a lot of research out there in terms of what people have used it for. And show lots of examples. So if you've got somewhere you can push it up a load of stuff of different people doing stuff, um, like kids' case studies, um, then that's a good idea. Give them access to that, get them going. And like I say, sell the advantages to the department, because once you've got departmental buy-in, you're there. You're halfway there to start off with. Um, so... Bring along some colleagues who've done it before. Like I say, Keith's a good one I've worked with before. I've got other colleagues I've worked with. You bring along a colleague, it becomes a bit more personal. And it, it's not just me talking about it. Um, make sure you've got lots of equipment to lend out. Um, set up a peer group of people. Pair people up. Get them working together. Uh, produce research outputs that tie into the PDR. And like I say, sort of cover some of the sticks. Um, get students to help. They're usually pretty keen and they've all got phones and devices nowadays. So if they get involved, then you're more likely to steer the academic in that direction. Um, find out whether they've got any personal sticks. And along with that, if you're trying to address issues like they've got with technology, I'm, I'm good with technology, 
Um, I do a, a swap shop, so I might go in there and say to them, right, I can help you with your diary. If I help you with your diary, um, you come and do a bit of video with me. So if you've got something that tailors it for them, frees them up from their time, then that's always a good thing. And basically, also, the other thing that you might want to do is share the load. And as Keith has already talked out, I've worked with a cameraman that will come in and do some bespoke training sessions. If you don't feel that you've got the sort of credibility from, the, from you just going in there and talking about it, it's a good idea to take, bring in a professional and get them to talk about it. And that's it. I hope that's motivated you. Thank you.